Jesus himself was baptized as an adult. That was the, the, the practice at the time of Jesus. John the baptizer uh, made this a very popular thing to do to uh, be immersed in water. And uh, what baptism symbolizes is our death, burial, and resurrection with Jesus. And so you see in Scripture, you see people profess faith in Jesus. And then as a result of that, then they, are, they respond by being baptized in water. And the water, obviously water can symbolize purification. Our sins are washed away. But in the Christian tradition, for baptism, water symbolizes burial. It symbolizes a grave where essentially somebody is dunked or immersed under the water. And depending on how bad they are, depends on how long you hold them under for. JK. Don't worry, guys. That's not going to happen. All right. So I shouldn't make these jokes. So they go under the water. That's like that, that represents when Jesus was buried in the tomb. Okay? Jesus was buried in the tomb. And then as they're drawn out of the water, so there are verses, direct verses in the Bible that spell this out for us and say this is exactly what it represents. As they come out of the water, that's like Jesus being resurrected from the dead. And so, of course, that's a, a spiritual work that God does in us. There's nothing particularly, you know, holy or about this water. We could use water from anywhere. But the point is that we're obey, we're told, we're told by Jesus to do this, to do this because he did this as an example for us to do this if we follow and trust in Jesus. Uh, hey, everyone. I'm Paisley Sweetman, and today I'm going to be baptized and also share when I gave my life to Jesus. Um, I was five years old and just laying in my bed, and my mom came in to tell me goodnight, and I don't know why, but I asked her to tell me when Jesus died. For the very first time, I found out there were two other men beside Jesus when he was crucified, and they are both sinful um, and thieves, and she told me the story. One man said to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus responded, today you will be with me in paradise. Right after that, I just whispered, I want to follow Jesus. And I gave my life to Jesus that night. And my mom went out and told, out and told my brothers and dad, and they prayed over me. And I've been longing to be baptized for, for um, five years. But one, but one story in the Bible popped up in my life three times in a row, and it was when Jesus healed ten lepers, and one came back and said, Thank you. I want to be the leper that came back, and the man who was next to Jesus and wanted to go to heaven, loving and serving, serving Christ. That's it. And now I think I'm going to be baptized. God bless. So Megan Rice says, she says, I stand here today realizing my life and what I wish I thought I wanted. But now I know better. From the very beginning, my eyes were closed to the truth of this world's deception. I found myself, I thought myself smart, but instead I was lost wandering, never really reading the Bible or knowing God at all. I went by what others told me. I had a wake up call two years ago through the darkest of circumstances. And now I fear God more than any law mankind has created. My desire isn't to be an achiever for all the happiness in this short life, but it is to inherit the kingdom of heaven. I found that through my journey, no one is smarter than God. And I severely see the consequence of sin in our society today. Too much depression, melancholy, anger with God, without prayer and without faith. I see what happens when you don't obey God. And I see what happens when you do. Therefore, the snake will always trample him under our hills. The path to heaven is narrow, but that's worth following more than any dream I thought I wanted to strive for in this short life. It's the only thing that matters now. I am being baptized today because before I didn't know why Jesus died. Now I do. I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Lola, like Matt said. I'm in Nigeria to a Muslim household. Um, my dad was Muslim, but my mom was raised a Christian. And due to tradition, when you get married as a Nigerian, you switch to whatever religion your husband is. Um, we celebrated both Ramadan and Christmas. Um, we were never forced to pray daily, um, but only during Ramadan, and that was really not strict. We would just pray whenever we felt like it, or fast whatever days we felt like it. Um, I always believed in God, but I just never prayed daily or called on to Him when I needed, good times or bad times. 
I lived a life that was very sinful. I drank. I did things that a true child of God should never be caught doing. But at that time, I honestly did not care. For a very long time, I have been trying to fill this huge hole in my heart. I went from one relationship to another, thinking that a man was what I was missing. And I did that for at least, I think, 15 years, if I count correctly. Um, I slowly lost myself after each relationship because each one made that hole in my heart bigger and bigger. And soon I found myself drinking my pain away. I thought that would, I thought that would help me feel nothing. Um, I thought it would, it would be better to be numb than feel the pain that I brought into my life. My drinking progressed from weekends to every evening then during the day. It got to the point that all I thought about was when I was going to have my next drink. I was self-medicating and not dealing with my issues. In 2016, I was in the worst relationship I have ever been in. And at that point, I got so tired of being physically and emotionally abused, loving someone that was not, loving someone that did not love me back. I decided that I was tired of living, so one night I took a whole bottle of aspirin and I laid in bed. I'm sorry. I took a whole bottle of aspirin and I laid in bed. Out of nowhere, I got a call from my therapist just to check in and see how I was doing. I guess she could sense that something was wrong, so she called 911. I opened my eyes to see about six police officers in my living room yelling my name and trying to get me to wake up. I was rushed to the hospital and I stayed there for about two days. After that experience, I decided to take a break from relationships and focus on myself. My mom has always been pretty religious. Um, she told me that all I needed to was all I needed was to focus on God, and He was. I'm sorry. All, all that I needed to do was focus on God, and He's all I need. But at that point, I really wasn't ready to listen. I always told her that she was forcing me to do something I didn't want to do, not knowing that she was a thousand percent right. I felt like I could handle um, the situation by myself by going to therapy and truly working on myself. That lasted for about four months and then I decided to go back to drinking heavily. I felt so alone and unloved. My mom kept, kept telling me to find a church and I would, I would be amazed what God can do. But I still was not willing because I truly at that point did not believe in God. And that was due to um, my personal experience with the amount of churches I've been to. So fast forward to August 2020, um, I decided that I was tired of being tired <laughs> and I needed more help than a human could give me. So I decided to Google, which is my favorite friend, Google, <laughs> churches around my neighborhood and I came up with Trinity. It had five stars and about six to five reviews that were all positive. I figured, it couldn't hurt, I was gonna give this a try. So every Sunday at 10, I'll log on to YouTube and I'll watch over and over again every Sunday. And I just, after I think it was the third Sunday, I felt this overwhelming connection with the messages that I was getting from the services every Sunday. Um, I felt acceptance and I felt loved. So I heard about the events that they were having for the workers at the church, so I decided to volunteer that day. Um, it was, I was trying to put myself out of my comfort zone and do something that I never thought I would do, so I volunteered to be a greeter that day. I remember when I arrived, the first people I met was Grant and Rochelle. <laughs> um, they were so pleasant and very welcoming, and my anxiety went from, it was like a thousand at that point, it went down to like 20. Um, I stood at the door and I was able to greet everyone. Um, you know, I got an award that night, which I was not expecting. <laughs> and ever since that day, I felt like I found a church that I could not only be myself, but just feel very comfortable, not feel judged, not looked down upon for the bad decisions that I had made. Um, and then I decided to join my first Bible study group, which was also Rochelle and Grant. <laughs> it was First Samuel, so I did First Samuel, we did Second, and then we did Kings. So I've been to, I think, about four or five small groups um, now, and I'm currently, I was going to say enrolled, that's school, um, enrolled in two um, small groups now, which is a Tuesday and the Merrick's group. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> I'm in your group. <laughs> 
Um, so for the first time in my life, I felt that gaping hole that I've been trying to fill up with one man to another, I felt it completely filled. I, I cannot explain what happened. It's just this, I don't know, just, just this overwhelming feeling that I got from coming to church every Sunday. But then sadly, last August, my dad passed away. I found myself again searching for answers at the bottom of every bottle that I drank. And that happened for weeks. It happened for, I want to say, two to three months. And then one morning I woke up and I decided that I was not living the life that God wanted for me. So I checked myself into rehab and I started working on myself again. But this time I did it with the knowledge of God and knowing that he healed me once and he would do it again. Now I have been sober for two months, which is exactly yesterday. <laughs> and I am grateful to God for accepting and forgiving me yet again. It shows that he is always there, willing and happy to accept you as you are, as you are without judgment. This is why I decided to get baptized. I have fully accepted God as my personal Lord and Savior, and I know that the woman I was before is not who I am now or who I would be after being baptized. Um, I would like to end this with one of my favorite what, lyrics from one of my favorite songs. Um, it's by Anthony Brown and Group Therapy. I don't know if anybody knows him. He's freaking awesome. Um, the name of the song is called Worth. I'm not gonna sing because I'm terrible. Don't want to traumatize anyone. So the lyrics goes, you thought I was worth saving, so you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping, so you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was worth you thought I was to die for, so you sacrificed your life. So I could be free, so I could be whole, so I could tell everyone I know. Hallelujah. Glory to God who changed my life. And I would praise you. I would worship you forever. I would give you glory forever because I am free, because I am whole, and I would tell everyone that I know. Thank you for listening. Is this your profession today that you have repented of your sin and follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. And it's our privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ.